Welcome everybody back to another show. We got another outstanding guest, Mr. P. Dunn Mega, Master Dog Trainer. I even hear some people refer to him as a ninja dog trainer. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all Welcome, praise, sir. All praise, all praise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, so uh, we're glad to have you here. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and where you're from and all that good stuff. Well, just a little bit. I, uh, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. You know, I've been training for over 40 years. And uh, basically, you know, I like to tell people that the training I do is, is I was taught by Lieutenant O'Jones. And everything that I experienced from Lieutenant O'Jones, Scorpio, uh, Lacey Sanders, Master Teacher Gypsy, everything I experienced, I experienced it in real time. So a lot of what you see today is a template, not my template, not Master, uh, Master Grandmaster Lieutenant O'Jones, not his template, but it's a template. It's, uh, it's what you've seen off of YouTube, but it's not necessarily real. What we teach is real defense. What I teach is real defense. And, uh, you know, I've been doing it ever since I was a kid. I mean, I started out training when I was 10 years old. And, oh, and uh, so it had to become real to me. It wasn't. Okay. It was it started out as a hobby and then it ended up being a profession. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when when did you, when? so you said 10 years old when you first started training. Yeah. Have you always had, a, did, have you always had like a uh, attraction to animals? Yeah, always had attraction to animals. I really first got involved in training because of two things. One, with one climactic event was dogs chasing me when I was on my way to my auntie's house. My auntie's house, my auntie lived on 7 nights in Aberdeen. We lived on 8th from Carpenter. My mama called my auntie up and say, Let me some money. My auntie said, Yeah, I'm the oldest. I got to go get the money. And these dogs always, always attacked me. And when I was little, they seemed like the biggest dogs in the world. <laughs> it seemed like it was huge. I was terrified. Right. One day I went down there, I decided I wasn't going to be terrified no more. So I ran the dogs off. It was about three of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that was it for me. <laughs> I said, I was the king of the dogs. That was yeah, it. All right. <laughs> right. And then there was another event where a dude named Johnny Tiger, when we was kids, we called him Johnny Tiger. He's like one of the most popular kids in the neighborhood. And he had like 77 cousins. <laughs> so <laughs> if you get in a fight with Johnny, you got to fight all 77 of his cousins. <laughs> he might not even be afraid of Johnny. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you'd be afraid of all them big cousins. So, you know, I had to find a way to become his friend. Mm -hmm. And he got a dog one day, and he named the dog Tiger. And he told me, Doug, I got a dog. I got a dog. What kind of dog you got, man? I got a dog named uh, uh, a German Shepherd Collier, German Shepherd Doberman or something. It was a mixed breed. It wasn't a pure breed. But back then, that was a big thing to us back then. That was a big thing. And it's true. I said, I could train dogs. That was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was it right there, man. Right. I said, I could tra you could train dogs, dog. I could train dogs. You know, you know, I got to be a little enemy because kids don't talk like, you know, sophisticated. Yes, I can train dogs. Right. And I went to this school. Kids are like really open. Like, y'all go, yeah, I can train dogs. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's where it started. And then there was this guy named uh, Charles Larry. And these other two kids, they had a pure breed. One of the two pure breeds in the neighborhood. It was a great day. That was back when they, great days and aggressive. And Charles Larry went in the job with, in the yard with this dog named Pistol. He was a big old dog. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I happened to be coming down the alley. And this dog was shaking Charles Larry like a dirty dish rag. I mean, he was shaking like he was a paper doll. And I had to go in that yard. I went in the yard and got Pistol off of Charles Larry. And everybody saw it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm really king of the dog for real. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, nobody called police or nothing. Charles Larry went to the hospital. So one day, Pistol got out, and he had people jumping on cars. <laughs> he just shaking people. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to get it. And I went down there, and everybody like, Doug, don't do that. You crazy. You crazy. I said, yeah, I'm about to get this dog. And I got him, showed the story up a little bit, and I was the hero then. <laughs> 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 uh, 
So you knew something, huh? You knew you knew something that everybody else didn't know, didn't you? That's it. That's it. I had to figure it out as I went, but I did. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, when did you? Uh, some of the names you mentioned, uh, Scorpio, Gypsy. When did you first meet these guys? Well, it's funny. A guy named Les something. I was working as an animal research junior scientist at the University of Chicago, more like a technician. And uh, this guy named Les told me one day, because I used to train all the dogs in the laboratory. Every dog in the laboratory, I train all of them, right? Make them do everything I need to do, take their medicine, so forth, so on. Les met me after work one day, and he said, until you start doing what you love, you'll never be successful. He should have never said that. That's, that just had, that might as well have been my daddy. Because mm. I started the real pursuit. And I saw an uh, ad in the Sun-Times newspaper. And it says, dog trainers needed, will train, no experience necessary. Uh-oh. My imagination was sorry. It was sorry. I couldn't stop. I got off work. I, I had a car. I should have just ran down there. Because <laughs> I was that excited. I went down there. And I met the late, great Jim Stratton and uh, James Stratton. Uh, that's Michael Stratton's. A.K.A. Gypsy, that's his dad. Mm -hmm. So if I went in chronological order, he was the one that gave me my first break. Get it? Like Lieutenant Earl Jones was the ultimate teacher. He was the one that brought me into the professional lifestyle, the professional abilities, the professional execution, professional ethics, code of ethics, how to carry yourself, what to wear, what not to wear, how to wear your hair, who to talk to, who not to talk to, business. You know, the whole nine yards, you know, the health, the anatomy of the dog, so forth and so on. Um, but James Stratton opened the door, and he had a school at that time, you know. And that school, and I found this out later in life, I, I'm an old-ass man. That school was really owned by Michael Stratton. I had no idea. Oh, wow. I thought that was James Stratton. But if I put the history in perspective, then I got to say what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. And so... uh he, uh, he was the owner of the school, and I went to the school, and he, he gave me a chance. He put me in front of two dogs. One dog's name was Rock, a giant sounds, and the other dog's named PK, a Doberman Venture. Prentice King was the dog's name. And he was owned, if I'm not mistaken, by a guy named Prentice King. And so I started working from there, and that's how I got to meet the entourage of the great one. right? Because they all came to that school. That was the best school in the whole city of Chicago. And when I say the best, I mean the best. I mean, you know, in order for you to say you're the best in the city of Chicago, you know how many millions of people live in Chicago and there was no social media? And to have your name resonating off the lips of people all over the city of Chicago, north, south, east, and west, beach, white people, whatever, you know, everywhere. That's powerful. No yeah. social media and all these people know you. You know what I'm saying? You got people on social media now, don't nobody know them. That's true. These people had hundreds of thousands of people following them then. Right, right. And to have you, huh? Now I was going to say, like, yeah, to uh, in, in a city as big as Chicago, and to be the man in a city like that, you could be known nationwide. That's nationwide, man. Chicago's I mean, I, I saw these things with my own eyes, you know. You know, and I, I'm telling you, like, when I give people their flowers, I don't mix it with, I'm mad at you about what you did last Tuesday. Remember when you said this? Yeah, here go my opportunity. I'm about to get you now. No. If I'm giving you your flowers, ain't going to be no beans in the damn flowers. I'm finna right. tell you, give you your flowers. Right. These guys own the dog world. You understand? These guys have broke all color barriers back then. There were people who couldn't even speak English coming to their schools. They had dogs I only seen in the encyclopedias, and a lot of people don't even know what a damn encyclopedia is because I don't think they have them no more. But that was our that was our surf the internet type thing. That was us, you know. And I could see Bouvier de Flanders. I saw my first Bouvier de Flanders come in from Canada, owned by this black guy uh, that at Jim Stratton School. You know, uh, it was amazing. The things I experienced with these guys was truly. Truly amazing. So, and I, I also know through Gypsy that uh, that it was a hotbed for dog training. A hotbed? It was the bed. I mean, until I got to be a grown man, 
of course, I was I was in Disney World, right? I was like living the life, right? So I didn't consider all of the variables, you know, but all praise be to the most high God. As I got older, they took on definition, right? At the time, I was having fun as a child, as a kid, looking up to guys who might as well have been Michael Jordan, you know, looking up to those guys, you know? And so, yes, you're right. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, what, what time frame, uh, uh, are we talking about all this was going down? What you? Oh, we, we're talking about. And see, I was out of high school. It was going on before that. So we're talking about seventies, eighties. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. So, hey, what is your what is your personal dog training philosophy? Well, my philosophy is one: the best dog is a trained dog. That's Lieutenant Earl Jones' quote, right? And the other is the only life the dog has is the one you give it. All right. right. Um, one, I stick with because of Lieutenant Earl Jones, my loyalty to him. And two, the one that I came up with is the only life a dog has is the one you give up. Right, right. I'm going to kind of pra- paraphrase this next question, but I was looking at something you did uh, before. And it, you said something in the, in the fashion of obedience is the highest level of protection manifested. That's right. Break that down, what that means for me. Absolutely. All praise be to the Father. So here's the deal. When you teach obedience, obedience down, sit, up, come, place, stay. That's known as obedience in its form and in its action, right? It's really mechanics, right? It's really mechanics. It is the act of a thing being uh, functional, right? It is the mechanics of a process, right? The root of that situation can't be seen, right? The root of obedience is discipline, right? Right. Obedience is the manifestation of what cannot be seen, which is discipline. Nobody goes out and says, look at my disciplined dog. Nobody. But if the dog does not have discipline, he or she does not have true obedience because it cannot stabilize itself. If you put a root in the ground and you grow apples, Right. If you cut off the root, the fruit gonna die. The stabilization and the root of obedience is discipline. Right. right? So when we start talking about protection, is the highest form of obedience. Right. Manifested, right. meaning all praise be to the Most High God. It is just another what obedience command. What rooted in what discipline? In that thing which cannot be seen, it's rooted in discipline. So this is why you see a lot of dogs that won't stop when they're told to stop because they don't have the root. They got the fruit, but they don't have the root, which makes it false fruit, mm-hmm. right? Because you can't say to them, Jimmy, Bobby, Spot, Duke, whatever, stop. They don't respect you like that. You think they respect you because you harness them in a leash and a collar with a muzzle and so forth, and a choke chain, and a spike collar, and an e-collar. So you think they respect you, but they don't. Right. Right? right? Because yeah. they don't have the hidden factor, the root, which is discipline. So when we go back to what you said, all praise be to the most high God, then bite just becomes another what? Another command. It is the highest form of obedience. It's just another command, what you said, because my discipline is so rooted in my obedience or my mechanics that my discipline supersedes the mechanics. As a result, you say the dog is well obedience trained, but in reality, he or she is well disciplined trained. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? So now that which is invisible speaks to that which is invisible. That means you don't have no leash on them. Mm -hmm. So now your invisible leash has to get them back. Right. And if you don't have that root in discipline, then your protection command when you want to shut it off will not work. Right. 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 I saw you do something. I was looking at one of your videos and and somebody brought your dog that had some behavior issues and you was able to work that out of the dog. Which dog you said? Man, I've, it was a black and white dog. Might have been a pit bull. You, you oh, know? I know you're talking about. Are you talking yeah. about the uh, what's her name? Female pit bull. It was a they female. Was pit bull. Her, they was gonna put her to sleep. They was gonna put her to sleep. Yeah, they, they said sleep. they told me that's just the last stop. If I don't fix her, help me, Holy Spirit, remember her name. If I don't fix her, 
then she she got me put down. Let me ask you this. So is that it I know it's training, but is that a dog trainer or is that behavior training? Or does that make any sense what I'm asking? Yes, it makes definitely makes sense. Uh okay. but is it is it a dog trainer, did you say, or a behavioral situation, did you say? That's what I'm asking, yes, sir. That's okay. So yeah. the issue is there was no discipline inspired, right? Mm -hmm. Inspired. Because when you were inspired to do something, you recall it, right, vividly, correct? Yes, sir. But when you're uninspired, you call it, you, you recall it haphazardly or with provocation, right? So you're less likely to get it pinpoint accurate. This particular dog was never introduced to discipline, right? So she could not respond appropriately. So it became a problem for the owners because when most people get dogs, they don't anticipate that this dog grows and grows and grows. So now you've got the puppy, right? The other word that would describe puppy is baby. I got my puppy baby. And now my puppy is growing further and further. And my puppy's some type of toddler right? Still a baby though, right? And still what? Cognizant to me. I can get my puppy to come to him with a blanket. You know, I can get my puppy to come to him, pick him up, they're coming every time. But now if I take my puppy even further and my puppy's now a teenager that can go out to a party and I try to get my puppy back with a cookie, my puppy's looking at the girl or the boy. My puppy's no longer interested in what I have to say. So what happens is people don't think about it like that. Now, here's what happens. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They turn into not just a canis lupus familiaris, but they turn into a animal. Right. Right? And somewhere along the translation of, of transitioning the dog, the puppy into a dog, we forget the category animal. Right? When he or she becomes this animal, you have to be able to speak animal. And most people don't. They're too busy trying to make their dogs into Chucky, Susie, Billy, Patricia, you know, Zula, you know. They're too busy trying to make their dogs into humans. But the scientific oh, name has no, no reference to human. It has a reference to wolf animal. I think the statistics are 92%. Don't quote me, but I think I'm very close in the neighborhood. 90% of the dog's DNA and his chromosomes are wolf, no matter what breed he is. Right, right. See? Yeah. So all praise be to the most high God, this is the problem. Why you get these dogs who turn into animals and people don't know how to respond to them. Okay, gotcha. Are you, do you use treats or no treats? I use treats with puppies. With puppies. And then you get them off of it, is it? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing I like to use treats for, too. It's called an antidepressant. Okay. If you're training for life, there's going to become some heavily pressurized moments in the dog's life. He or she will be withdrawn from that process. So you have to kill them with an antidepressant. Because what it does is it completely, because it's an animal, it completely erases any memory of anything that was uh, derogatory to the dog. It just goes away quick. Bam! Dog lights back up. That's that's how you end the session, right? With a dog who does not handle pressure well. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right, man. You go deep in this stuff, don't you, man? All praise. All praise. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there? Are there? Personally, is there any dogs breed types that you prefer to train for protection? Uh, absolutely. I've got a, I got a video coming out now called the Big Seven, okay. uh, and it'll be coming out real soon. You'll see it on Instagram. You might be one of my friends on Instagram. I don't know. Under Canine Development University, or you know, I've got several pages. I'll probably send them all to you. Be yeah, that's who okay. you are. Okay. Uh, but uh, yes. I prefer the dog that meets the demand of society, right? There was a time, if you turn back the clock, you will find that the dog that was in demand in society at that particular time 
say about the 60s, was uh, a bulldog, okay? He or she did not look like the English bulldog. They looked more like an American bulldog on steroids, right? This is the bulldog I grew up with. He or she was favorable because the time was suitable for that dog. The other t dog that was suitable for that time was, hold on one second, listen to my wife, hold on. Yeah, I forgot to tell her. Hey, baby, I'm, I'm on a podcast. I'm on a podcast. I'm on a podcast. I got to call you back. I'm on a podcast. I got to call you back. I'm on a podcast. I got to call you back. Gotcha. So anyway, uh, the dog, the other dog was a collie. Remember Lassie? Lassie. Yeah. You know, Lassie was a dog, or that was the type of dog. You didn't see the black and white one that was a part of the collie, which is probably a little bit more protective. You saw Lassie was more glamorous, more blonde, more pretty, everything for that particular time. And then you had the dog Ren Ten Ten and another dog called the Littlest Hobo. They were German Shepherds. These were the dogs that fit that time. The German Shepherd has transitioned throughout time. But if you go down the spiritual roller decks of life in chronological order, you will see that the next dog was the Doberman Pinscher, and then it was the Rottweiler, and then it was the Pit Bull. You see what I'm saying? So the dogs I tend to like are the ones who fit the time. Now you see uh, videos today of people pulling up in, they call it Juki, pulling up in the driveway, pull a gun on somebody and rob them right in the driveway in broad daylight. No worry about the neighbors calling nothing. They juke you right in the butt. They follow you from the bank. They see what you're getting. They follow you to your house or wherever they're going to get you, and they rob you, okay? So I need a dog that's suitable for juking. See, I need a dog that's suitable for horrendous times, violent times. So I need a violent dog, a dog that can go from, from sugar to shit in two seconds. Right. Right. I need them to have that violent mentality. What dogs are more suitable for that process? They don't think about it. They be about it, right? That dog is the Presa Canario, the Connie Corso, right? The Kangol, right? The uh, the largest Kangol in the world. I forgot his name. It's kind of hard to say. Uh, and then uh, uh, Giant Snobs are cool. They they really, really bother some. I mean, if you get the right ones, we'll be into fighters. Another breed that's Canis Papa. Another breed. These breeds are breeds that are suitable for the time. Dogs that are not going to be uh, sporadic or, or confused. Uh, the Malinois is not going to be sporadic or confused. Probably too much dog for most people, the Malinois, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. High energy. But, huh? High energy. High energy dogs. Very athletic dogs. Those are the dogs that I tend to glean to mm -hmm. gotcha gotcha um go, go uh pray defense could do you can you explain your philo philosophy why is it all defense or is it all defense i don't know defense is what you call in a scientific form personal protection defense is suitable for the law okay in other words we don't have the legal right to do sport on civilians. If we're not police officers, military, or someone of that stature, we have no right to pursue someone down the street to apprehend them. Policemen have the right to pursue and apprehend. And what most people don't know is that insurance policies do not recover them for dogs that will run down the field, apprehend and kill, okay? The reason I could not do a lot of police work back in the day is because my dogs was too rough. My dog was going to eat your butt up. They leave the dog to stand there and hold the dog with the man at bay. Back then, they were bay dogs. You know, you couldn't, they couldn't, the dog couldn't even grab the person. It bay the dogs, right? Now they grab them, okay? But the thing about it is, that's more of a sport dog. Okay. Sport dogs don't really bite. You have dogs that are doing sport that have the ability to go beyond sport. They are few and far between. And when they go beyond sport, they have no cutoffs. You can't stop them. Right. Right. right? Because yeah. these dogs are, are taught to bite and hold and don't let go. Now, what if that's a 16 year old kid? 
and they got him by the neck. They're not even taught to bite in the neck. But what if you get lucky? Or what if you bite him around the wrist or in the groin? Here's a kid that's running for probably a bite, and he ends up dead, right? right? So you really have to think about what's good for the public. The deepest dog is good for the public. Why? Because he or she is command and stop, right? right? He or she will not uh, seek its own way, right? They right. look to their owner or their master because everybody that's an owner is not a master. They have to ta be taught how to be a master. They only facilitate the position of an owner. They don't have master positions that has to be taught to them. So this is why you see a lot of dogs out of control because their owners own the papers, they feed them, they house them, but that's all they are is owner. See, mm -hmm. gotcha. to be a master is something else. That's different. Right. For them to be the, their dogs, master has to be, excuse me, taught to them. Right. right. Uh, this is another question someone told me to ask. Uh, how, in, how important is it, is it to bond with your dog? Oh, that's really important because that's a, part of the element that involves discipline, right? How can you suitably, right? How can you suitably uh, encourage discipline in its highest form if you and the dog don't even know each other? Bonding is essential. Right. It's very, very important. Um, your most memorable dogs that you may have trained, that you may have not trained, that always stick out to you, who are those? The most memorable do dogs was a Doberman Pinscher by the name of Sonny Bonecrusher. He was my dog. An American Bulldog that I bought from Sylvester Stallone, his name was Little Boy. A Doberman Pinscher by the, uh, that I, I, uh, I got as a kid, his, his name was Dr. Willbite. And then I had a pit bull, American Pit Bull Terrier, and his name was the Duke of Pain. They were the most memorable. And now I got a dog that is unbelievable, and his name is Blackjack. He's just a Malawan. Malawan. He's big too, big mouth. Right. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, he's yeah. see big. Yeah. So you you dropped a lot of history on us and uh, tell us about um, older trainers who changed the game or even started the game. Um, who do you know any up upcoming uh, trainers that you're impressed with? Um, up and coming, very few, very few because they don't stick to anything. Right. Right. I'm about finishing. Right. Um. Uh, you have to finish with me. I have to see you as a finisher, right? right? Because the hardest thing for any dog trainer or a professional dog trainer, which is two different things, right? That's one guy that went to the show and the other guy that finished the show, right? right. The professional is a finisher. The professional is a problem solver, right? The professional is not an exhibitionist. That's somebody that likes to be seen, right? The professional wants to work right. That's the main thing. Right. Right. But the closest thing I see today uh, to being somebody that could be somebody is Jeremiah Shepard. That's the closest thing. Yeah. 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 You know, I see. He's the closest one. He went to my school. Yeah. I've seen see him uh, all the yeah. videos y'all together. Yeah. yeah he, he went to my school. Uh, but, but other than that, and I'm not being prejudiced because I gave a lot of people a chance. Mm -hmm. Right. I have single handedly resurrected dog training in Texas. Mm -hmm. If you go back to 2009, 2007, you seem like somebody to do their homework. So if you go back to 2007 and check the videos on YouTube, you won't see no flesh work. None. If you see any from anybody, it's going to be gypsy. Right. Yeah. Okay? It's going to be gypsy. If you see any from anybody, because I don't even know if I had, yeah, I have some back there. I talked to one of my students the other day. He said, we started, we was back there. Way back. And I'm like, okay, he gave me a date, but I don't want to misquote it. But right. we were out there then, okay? But I'm giving the overall view, not just us, the overall view. You will see that most trainers were apprehended by the sleep and the suit, right? You didn't see that, right? You didn't right. see it at all. Now, if you go up to 2009, you start seeing me more talking and making videos, right? Making videos. And a lot of people used to get on me about talking. But because they wanted to just see Archer. But I knew that was going to haunt me down the line, so I talked, mm -hmm. right? Because ultimately, people want to know what you know, and there are certain things you cannot pretend. It's just certain things you cannot fake, right? If you right. ask the average trainer, 
about the occupant of a dog. He can't tell you where it's located. Right? If you ask them where the carpus is on a dog, they can't tell you where it's located. There's just some things you cannot pretend. And you're standing around people saying, I'm a professional, and they ask you a professional question that a professional should be able to answer, and you can't answer. Yes, so yes. even if I know you, but I know you didn't finish, and I know you're not about completing anything, you're just about being seen, I'm not going to say nothing about you. Right. Because I'm furthering your exploits, and people are being deceived. If you notice, Jeremiah Shepherd knows me. If you know, I was apprehensive to say his name, right? Mm -hmm. Because I don't like giving credibility to the people that didn't finish, but he stayed longer than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. hard. I'm a hard teacher. Right. Okay. I don't like all that pretending, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and pumping you up for something that you're not. Right. Knowing you scared of dogs and I'm going to sit there and pump you up. You out of your mind. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because here's yeah. the thing you got to understand. People's lives are at stake. It's, yeah, it's not, it ain't a game. It ain't a game. When you take these dogs out on the street, a guy named Demetrius in Chicago liked to have his head blown off for pretending. A man's wife was out there with that dog, and the dog didn't show up because Demetrius was good with antics. He was good with, whoa, he was good to get that. <sighs> but the dog wasn't a finisher. Right. The lady almost got raped and killed. Mm. Right? Mm. You want somebody playing with your life like that? I yeah. don't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't want I don't want my wife or somebody's pretend dog. Say that right. like they're breathing hard like you on the video, breathing hard like you really did something, and you just rolling on the dirt with a damn dog that don't even bite. That's why I started interviewing trainers when I, you know, discovered Gypsy and and a, a guy out of Oklahoma, Clyde Thompson, they you know, they kinda say, Man, watch that dog run off with that sleeve. Well, right. that ain't real. It ain't real. I, so I said I would show the people real right. dog trainers and things like that. So Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, is there any, what, so do you sell dogs already finish? Yes. And, and, okay. How's that process work? Do you, I mean, I know you probably kind of vet the person you sell this, this, this type of dog to. The thing about it is, is that, uh, there's no, there's almost no opportunity to have them, uh, a few of them ready to sell. You can't finish them. You can't finish them because, if the dog is finished, he or she's not going to go with them, right? And they might even bite them. Yeah. Right? You got to bring them to a point, a boiling point, and then you stop, right? Okay. If you're fortunate enough. Otherwise, you got to put one together for them. They tell you what they want. You interview that person. You make sure that person knows what they get involved in, and you start to tailor make them a dog. Okay. Okay. And then a and lot of that, too, they have to be there for you to get them to the next level, probably. Right. Where it worked with right. the handler. To finish them, that's right. Right. So you got a K-9 University. Will you tell the people about that, the name of it, location, and all that good stuff? Well, K-9 Development University is a private school, mm -hmm. right? It's not someplace you could just walk up to, even if you saw the interview, and you say, I'm going to K-9 Development University. No, you're not. Then he's going to call, and we're going to talk to you first, because I need to know what you are trying to accomplish. First of all, because we're not the cheapest. Right, so we're not the least expensive place to go. So if you're looking for something the least expensive for twenty five hundred dollars, you want a miracle? Go down the street. They got plenty of. Them. I don't. I don't. Right. Uh, the person has to have, you know, good morals, good intentions. Right. You know, I'm not trying to train a dog for somebody that's going to go out and do some harm. You know, I want to train a dog for a family person, for, you know, a police officer. You know, people like that. You know, I'm, I don't care if I train it for a guy who works at the grocery store as long as the purpose is proper. The purpose has to be proper, you know. So it's a private school. We don't get everybody, right? We don't get everybody because we have a high standard. Like my puppies and dogs have to be developed. So you're not going to come in and give me a dog uh, and say, 10 weeks, you're done. Maybe she will be, maybe they won't. 15 weeks, maybe they will, maybe they won't because I'm going to develop them in their minds. I know my mobiences don't work when you're not away from a place, when you're not at my studio, because they are going to be developed. They're going to go through everyday life scenario with me while they learn mechanics, which is called obedience. Okay, while they're learning that. They may be slow to pick up in some areas, right? You know, if it's a puppy, I'm not going to try to force them to it because I'm going to ruin the puppy. 
The puppy's going to be depressed. He ain't going to be down. And they were saying, all the reason they're doing it is because they're a puppy. And you don't want to wait through the process to get them to turn that corner easily. Right? Right. Because every puppy is not going to be treat oriented. Right. That's a misconception. Right. Yeah. There's some puppies that don't like treats. Now, how are you going to train them now? Right. Right? Yeah. What you going to do now? There's some puppies that don't like being choked or spiked or shocked. I shot the dog one time with the e-collars years ago. That sucker ran off and I ain't seen to this day. Why? <laughs> and me and had some heat back then. <laughs> you know, I know tough. So, hey, hey, you going to great today. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Gun, let it out. And I ain't seen no more. So I don't even go say. I don't even say. Yeah. He was a fan of that electricity, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So you have to develop these dogs, these puppies. You have to develop them. You know, I'm changing my 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 contracts and my uh, uh, stuff because I want the last part of my career to be valuable and meaningful. So when a guy comes to me with a four-year-old dog, a three-year-old dog that weighs 130 pounds and got a bunch of problems, you're going to get a 130-pound price. Why? Because you brought this dog after he was a grown man, right? And you want me to fix him in magic. Magic, magic, six weeks. And he'd been living like this for three years? You are corny, right? I'm not going to change my structure. I'm not going to change the way I execute. I will train your dog for you, which is going to cost you. Right. Ain't it's going to cost. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, besides that, do you got that uh, the website, the training website up yet? Is there something you're working on still? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah it's been up for a long time. Okay, what what's the name of it? It's K9 Valley University, but it's called the website address is Private School Four, the number four. Okay. Private School, the number four dogs. Okay. Dot com. Private School Four Dogs. Dot com. All right. All right. And then they, they just kind of walk you, what's what's all in, in, entailed in that? Well, the obedience, just pretty much the typical stuff. Uh, right. You know, I like to get in conversations with people, so I leave a lot of stuff out because I want them to ask me. Right, right. right, right. Every dog is different. Every person is different, right? I get a lot of high-end people to come, right? Their lives are different, you know? Right. So I get a lot of hard-working people to come. Their lives are different. So to put something up there and say, this is it, you're backing yourself into a corner. Yeah. So for the people, you know, you, we got a lot of scams out there. And like you were saying, a lot of people pretending that they can train and making things look good. Then for, for people that's looking for a good trainer, what are some aspects of a trainer? That they are some questions they should ask before they hire a trainer. I would say ask them who taught them. Ask them what? Right. Ask them who taught them. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You know, you know ask them did they finish school. Right, because those things you can track. Now you can call their school teacher and say that they finished. Right, those are things that you want to know. You say why? Because the, every sports municipality tries to. I don't want to say it factually and actually because there may be some history I'm not privy to. But my experience has taught me that they don't take kids into the professional sport arena that didn't finish school. Why? Because they probably won't show up to practice either. They're not going to be reliable when problems break up, when when attitudes change, when you're not being patted on the back every time, you know, when you're not uh, 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 doing an Instagram video, you know, they're not going to be finishers. Why would you hire somebody that's not a finisher to help change the lifestyle of a dog that's giving you problems that you love? They're not going to be a good, good candidate. So when you ask those two questions, you're going to eliminate a lot of people. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of stammering, a lot of upchucking. You know, I do my own thing, and, you know, saying like this. You know, look at what they wear, right? When a person's doing serious protection training, look what they're wearing. Flip-flopping slippers and short pants. Yeah, right, you're serious. Yeah, yeah, sure, you're serious. A janitor comes, comes to work with the right clothes on. A football player comes to work with the right clothes on. The guy who cooks hamburgers has a uniform. Right? You're going to tell me you're training my dog to do protection and flip flops and shorts? I ain't taking you serious. Exactly. I'm not taking you serious. Those are little things that you can look for that tell you this guy's not serious. 
he don't know what he's doing. So a lot of them, they get what? They look for dogs with high drive and they they live off of that. But if they had to make a dog, what about you? What about me? Maybe we didn't start off the toughest kids on the block. You know, maybe we were a little apprehensive, a little afraid. Maybe we were afraid until we was in eighth grade. Maybe until we was a freshman. Some people don't blossom at the same time. But then turn around and be a beast, right? So dogs are the same way, you know? Can they make a dog that don't say they don't want to do it? Can they make one? Right. Right. These are the things people should look for, gotcha. right? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, they sir. should look for. If if they use treats the whole time, I don't want them doing no business on my dog because life ain't a treat. Right. Right? right. My dog's going to be out on the street. Well, somebody would be glad to call animal control and have my dog throw it in the damn thing and killed. And you train my dog with treats. Everybody ain't going to have no dang on treat. I need you to stay because I said so. Mm-hmm. Right? Another you know, be, That's right. You've got to you've gotta be for real with yourself. You know? Uh, the other thing is, how well can they educate you? Right? If you're not stimulating their conversation, how well can they educate you? Can they continue a strong conversation Right, without you having to spike the punch. Mm-hmm. Right? Those are things you need to look at. Right? Because if they can't educate you just talking to you, they more than likely cannot solve a problem or train your dog. Right, right. Those yeah. are just the few things you can look for. Right. Is there any type well, I guess it is a type of person that you that probably don't need a protection dog if they it's just certain uh personality. I don't know if it's person can have a protection protection dog. Or, well, a bully. A bully don't need a protection dog. Yeah, he don't, he don't need, oh, God. Yeah, a don't. bully don't need no protection dog, right? They're going to be dangerous, and they're going to put a bad rep on the breed, and they're going to put a bad rep in the community. Bullies don't need protection dog. I don't train dogs for bullies, but I do fight them. Yeah, yeah. But when they come in my school, I start stuff with them. I can smell them. Mm-hmm. I start something with them. See, I want to see. What you are you real now? Cause you ain't on your thing. Are you real? No, you're not real. Like, yes, okay. get out of here. You're not getting no dog for me. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm not gonna train a dog for a guy who can take his dog and turn his dog loose on me while I'm trained. Yeah. That's ridiculous. All money ain't good money. That's right. The best dog to train a protection dog for is a woman. Best person, sorry. Is a woman, a little bitty woman, a big woman, it doesn't matter, a woman. Okay. The best person is a little old lady, right? You know, it's a, the best is mama. You know, these are the best older gentlemen, right? These are the best people, right? Mm-hmm. The little kids that be getting picked on. You know, I like to deal with people who are special, endearing, caring people, right? And they just want something. They just need a little edge. They really don't like to fight. And they just need somebody to do some talking for them. That dog right. will do some talking and some walking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, oh man, I thought what was that question I was going to ask you? Okay, this is my last one for you. What makes your program different than most trainers? Great question. I can answer that very easily. One, we don't use choke trains. We don't use spike collars. We don't use electric collars, and we only use treats with puppies. Like I told you, we also use them as an antidepressant, right? Yeah. We teach dogs to work in a civil environment, right? That's going to be what? Complementary to the laws that we're governed by in the United States of America. Our dogs will fit in any environment. Got you. Okay. All right. So, uh... Tell the people how to get in touch with you. And, of course, I will put it in the description when the video comes out on YouTube. Uh, they can reach out to us at our website. I gave it to you early. Private schools, the number four for dogs dot com. Private school for dogs dot com. And uh, the number is, uh, what is it? 214-606-4962. That's 214-606-4962. Or 512-669-6518. They can reach us at those numbers. Okay. All right, man. P. Dunn, brother. Yes, sir. All praise. All praise to the great God. Yes, sir. I appreciate you as well. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. We'll see you. Get this, yes, sir. Have a great day. All right. All right. You too. Just being honest.
world of a different